डेवलपमेंट ऑफिसर in the office of assistant commissioner panchayat jammu and uh, apart from my academics and work i cherish my time spent with family and friends so uh, you said uh, your training is complete now uh, sir actually the jammu kashmir administrative service uh, specifically they were not uh, trained uh, that much because of the paucity and dearth of administrative officers in the state okay so it was cut short for uh, only 21 days and then we were put in the field oh i see uh, we recently had uh, had one uh, uh, from the police jkp to police service also he also says the same thing that uh, after about 3 weeks training he was sent back for normal work very strange very strange for the new cashier anyway uh aryan Do you have any connection with the tribe uh, in uh, Kargil? No, sir. Actually, no. Uh, no, sir. What is unique about that tribe? So they are Dard Aryans, or they are the ethnic community of Ladakh, so, uh, and they are uh, uh, in uh, the original inhabitants of the place. No, uh, anthropologically speaking, are they are they indigenous people, or uh, they came there? Uh, from somewhere so anthropologically it's highly debated because mm -hmm. uh, no research ha can confirm this that who are the original inhabitants and who are the descendants so uh, we'll have to probably go back into history and delve very deep into uh, the definitions of what constitutes a original inhabitant so there has been a debate on that so it's not uh, confirmed as to they were uh someone who came migrated from the central asia or they were the original inhabitants all right uh what is the status of uh, panchayats right now are they operative in jammu and kashmir or no longer so the uh the uh, bdc is the block uh, the bdc uh, has been dissolved now so elections are due but uh, as a whole the concept of panchayati raj post the 2019 is now aligned to the uh, the 73rd constitutional amendment act prior to that we had jammu kashmir panchayati raj act of uh, 1989 uh, in which there was a two tier system so it's operative sir do you think it has uh, uh, brought jamhuriyat as jammu and kashmir is fall of falling Jamhuriyat uh, to the grassroots. Sir, the uh, the seventy third constitutional amendment. You are asking about that, sir. No, but Jammu, the experience of Jammu and Kashmir. Sir, in regards to the Panchayati Raj. Yes. Okay. Sir, definitely, I think the the penetration has increased. So now we have three tier system as opposed to the two tier system that we had prior to two thousand nineteen. and the panchayati raj institutions have now penetrated uh, more into the grassroots so i would say yes sir what do you think of the inclusion of uh, certain communities in the st community yes, sir. do you think it will uh, it will uh, highlight or it will increase societal tensions than uh, becoming more inclusive so uh, definitely it will have a uh, ramification when we talk about the uh, the tribes that are already included in the scheduled tribes because adding that will had uh, have appre uh, apprehensions in their mind that their quota will get reduced or uh, their own uh, reservation can be challenged in some ways but i think it it will make the 
द कम्युनिटी ऑफ स्केड्यूल ट्राइब्स इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर नो रिप्रेजेंटेटिव एंड पीपल हु आर रियली इन नीड ऑफ अफॉर्मेटिव एक्शन शुड गेट इट सो आई थिंक इट्स अ स्मॉल प्राइस टू पे इन दैट वे पॉपुलेशन ऑफ मॉलडीव इज islamic population and india also hosts a significant population of uh, muslims and apart from that uh, we also share a ter- uh, not territorial uh, 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 sea boundary with uh, maldives so in that way and the archipelago is somewhat similar to that of lakshadweep so i i i would say that we have a connection with the maldives okay uh, the last question to you yes, the indian diplomacy Do you think has uh, done well in the case of uh, Maldives? Are we not reduced to the status of just being the sabzi walas of uh, uh, Maldives? Sir, I would uh, hesitate to say that because India uh, plays a ethical game and a long game in that way. Because uh, India is India as opposed to China uh, are two very different powers uh, when it comes to. the south asian region we have our sagar doctrine and we are one who helps the countries in term when they need it uh, same with the case of maldives when they needed india's thank help thank you ma'am uh, abrajida jammu and kashmir was divided into in fact uh, divided in three territories union territories now Kashmir says we want to be state, yes. right? They are they have been demanding. Ladakh also says, will it be better for India or for the welfare of the people, economic and uh, economic development and welfare, whether Kashmir should be same as previous one state with uh, three regions or three states or three union territories? or some union territories and some states so uh, i think uh, in the present time uh, definitely as the the government has also ensured that uh, uh, jammu and kashmir will be uh, made a state again so i think that can be the long term uh, goal or the goal that we should uh, look for in the future and ladakh being a union territory uh, with some significant amount of autonomy and representation that they are demanding for in particularly if i talk about jammu and kashmir uh, it is unprecedented that a state has been downgraded to the uh, position of a union territory but it was in uh, it, it is uh, definitely uh, in the welfare of the state in general because after the 2019 I would say the situation in Jammu and Kashmir has in, uh, improved by leaps and bounds. So the de- uh, the the uh, downgrading of Jammu and Kashmir, though difficult at that point, has now uh, started showing its fruits. But the long term goal should be to make it a state again. Why long term goal should be if it is doing good? Why we should go back to statehood? so because uh, jammu kashmir not being a homogeneous state you t- union territories are basically controlled by the central government and they are apt for a homogeneous population who is not very uh, different to each other but jammu and kashmir is very heterogeneous in terms of its culture language religions and significant autonomy must be provided okay if that argument holds good let us go for pok also let us uh, get to pok also part of <coughs> jammu and kashmir and make it a full fledged jammu and kashmir with uh, integrated kashmir Sir. kashmir and jammu with autonomous pok has always been the part of india uh, it's a part of jammu and kashmir has been always 
So as in we claim that to be the part of okay, the integral day. part yes, of sir. India. Yes, sir. So definitely, if uh, in times that we can uh, rightfully uh, create by using cultural and economic diplomacy, can we make and and propaganda as a diplomatic instrument? Can we make uh, POK as gradually part of India? So that is the goal. To begin with. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. that is definitely the goal. India has always believed that POK is the integral part of Jammu and Kashmir and Indian territory. So that is definitely the goal. Uh, knowing the fault lines that we have with Pakistan on this issue, I think uh, it will be a little difficult. Okay. Okay. Yes. Welcome, You are student of commerce. Yes, sir. Tell me, in what circumstances we do forensic audit? What is the purpose of doing forensic audit? Forensic audit, sir? Um, I'm sorry, sir. I no, okay. See, if you if you want to select a company, which which is investable company, which you want to invest, yes. what, are, what financial ratios will be important to watch, to see whether the company is in good health, financial health or not? So I would uh, see the debt to equity ratio. I would uh, see uh, um, so the so, uh, so I'm sorry. Can I take a moment? Yeah. Sorry, sir. I am not able to remember. What is the importance of cash flow? So cash flow is the amount of. Uh, uh, liquid assets that a company holds for the daily for taking out the daily activities of the company is debt to equity ratio is always a bad thing or uh, in higher debt when the company is in expansion mode is good so it depends as you said uh, sometimes if it is in expansion mode and if uh, the company is sure that the debt is going to be serviced by uh, if if it is possible to service that debt it is not bad sir Sometimes there was Hindenburg report. Yes, sir. What was the Hindenburg report? I'm sorry, sir. You have not read. You no, have sir. Commerce should have read that. Okay, tell me what is the per capita income of the country? Sir, per capita income of the country is around $2,000. And uh, when we reach uh, developed nation status, what would be the per capita income at that time? It's around $12,000. $12,000. Okay. When did we reach uh, the size of 1 trillion economy? Which year? Sir, uh, I do not remember, sir. What is the gross domestic saving rate of the country? Gross domestic saving rate, sir, it is around 27%. So which high, with the highest saving rate, our uh, industry, the private capex is not coming up. What is the reason that domestic where does the domestic saving goes? This is very high yes, sir. compared to any standard, 27% very high rate. So can you repeat the question? The, the saving rate is comparable to other countries, it is very high. Yes, sir. But still we, our industry is not getting the finance which is, which it needs to grow. So, so what is where the fault? Like sir, the fault? first would be the general slowdown after the pandemic years. Uh, the so investment getting has... Getting loan, getting big amount of loan, the get amount of money from the people, is it? Always a challenge yes, sir. for the industry. Capital is an important input. Yes, sir. So, with such a domestic having it, where is the contradiction? What is wrong? The, we should have been a huge uh, pool of investment available with us, but it is not there. And this is a contradiction. How do you explain the contradiction? Sir, because uh, savings definitely India saves, but they are not uh, investing the savings. Yeah. Where does the investors? So they generally pool it uh, either in cash or uh, either with the banks, but they are not. Uh, what other areas the domestic savings goes? Sorry, sir. What other areas domestic savings goes? Um, sir, I am not able. If you to think of your home, your surrounding people, how do they talk? So yes, sir. So they generally put it in immovable and movable uh, general, general assets. General yes, sir. Yes, sir. Real estate and gold, yes, sir. 
Is Aryan your surname? No, sir. So, what is it? So, my actually, sir, <coughs> my uh, father also doesn't uh, put any surname with his name. So, it was just my uh, last name that he thought was aesthetically pleasing with my name. So, this is not. By the right. same logic, can somebody use Dravidian as like this? So, if they find it nice, yes, sir, why not? What are these two groups, Aryans and Dravidians, anthropologically speaking? Yes, sir. So these are the first uh, uh, inhabitants of mother. If we go back in history for a, for some period, these are the ethnic groups and the racial groups that were present in the Indian subcontinent. Not linguistic. Sorry, sir. <coughs> Not linguistic. Yes, sir. Uh, in linguistic also. Now, which one of them was an indigenous group? Both or any one? Sir, Dravidian. Dravidians. Yes, sir. Now. Bal uh, <coughs> Gangadhar Tilak had written a book, Arctic Home in the Vedas, yes, sir. claiming that the Aryans came from the North Pole. Yes, sir. How logical is that? So it is possible, but uh, I think uh, later he only uh, uh, made some corrections to that, but I'm not sure about that if he did that. Uh, it is possible that they came from <coughs> the Arctic or the Central Asian region, uh, considering the ethnic uh, or the Central Asia and Arctic are far from each other. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so it's uh, as I said, they are only speculations, and no one is sure which area. Some believe that they also had in, uh, European roots. Some believe they came migrated from the Central Asia, mm. while some believe they came from the Arctic. Assuming that the Aryans came from outside. Yes, sir. Was it an invasion or a migration? So again, it could be both of them because we have a paucity of data on both. Uh, but what do you think logically it would have been? So if I uh, if I take myself to the argument of uh, Indus Valley civilization, then I would say it was an invasion. But uh, if I believe that the Indus Valley civilization moved somewhere else, then I, it could be a migration as well. So you are not not taking a stand. <coughs> I would go with the invasion theory. But why would they invade? They were pastoral nomadic people. Yes, sir. Why would they invade? So, uh, sir, I would not say they came with the idea of invading the territory only because as they uh, must have been moving towards uh, the Indian region, they might have uh, faced conflict or some kind of. Uh, Fair enough, agreed. Uh, you have done something about business ethics. What are the main components of business ethics? So, uh, corporate social responsibility can be one of the business ethics that are very relevant today. Environmental ethics, sustainability can be others. Can business be ethical, broadly speaking? So, if from the point of view of profitability, business uh, uh, may not be ethical. Making a profit is not a crime, is it? Yes, no, sir. So then, uh, sir. But in today's uh, uh, day and age, when people moral fabric is uh, eroded, I don't. I get your point. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you are a <coughs> proficient in classical dance of Kathak. Yes, sir. Which ruler was associated with this Kathak? Sir, uh, there were many. Primarily, uh, Vajid uh, uh, Nawab of Awadh. What was the name? Sir, if I'm not forgetting, it was uh, Vajid Ali Shah. Hmm. Okay, you have also mentioned about a YouTube channel on education and anthropology. Yes, sir. Do you think this online education will ever be able to replace the offline method of education? So it doesn't need to replace the offline because uh, it mm -hmm. can act as a good uh, uh, facilitator to the offline education. Uh, replacing I don't think is a good idea and it should not do that. It should not do that? Yes, sir. Then uh, how are we supposed to digitize? Uh, so by that I meant that uh, offline education has its own pros and cons which is something irreplaceable. Uh, online education can never do that. It can only be a facilitator. Okay, coming to your optional anthropology, tell me about out of Africa theory. Yes, sir. So it is believed that the original 
uh, Homo, the first Homo that was the Homo erectus. Uh, the mother of all uh, Homos were born in Africa, uh, precisely East Africa, the Tuang, the Kenya region. Um, and, and after that, the migration started happening to the Europe and uh, other parts of Asia and that is how the out of Africa theory was derived. Okay, being the student of anthropology, uh, tell me about the low city of Petra. Uh, can you repeat the question, sir? Uh, low city of Petra. You ever heard of it? Sir, I am forgetting it, sir. You have heard of it, but you are never. I think so. I, I read it somewhere, but uh, I cannot remember it. Can you come up with something? What are you able to recall? Um, I am blank on it, sir. <laughs> okay. What's the difference between this uh, social anthropology and sociology? When we have sociology, why there is a need of having social anthropology? And if we are having social anthropology, what's the need of sociology? Sir, the difference uh, between social anthropology, in my uh, limited knowledge, uh, and sociology would be the, uh, the people uh, whom we are studying. In sociology, it mostly uh, studies the uh, the modern societies and this, uh, the present day societies. Whereas in social anthropology, though anthropology is studying the human uh, and the mankind in holistic <coughs> ways, but our prime uh, uh, subjects are the tribal population. So okay. that would be one difference, sir, I would say. You are a student of commerce and economics. Why you chose this optional anthropology? This is totally... Sir, actually, mm. uh, after my post graduation, I started preparing for uh, UPSC and state civil services. And in our state, there used to be at that time two subjects. So I started studying anthropology. And then when I immersed into the subject, I, I thought my interest was uh, growing and it was a newfound love. So by the time <coughs> I was writing the mains this time, I was more comfortable with this. Part. Okay. My last question. Yes, Tell me if the fiscal deficit of any country is increasing, is it a good thing or a bad thing? So again it depends upon the kind of expenditure that the country incurs. Okay. Uh, Thank you. <coughs>
So that's an orbital as well, and uh, it doesn't cast. You are not casting as person yourself on your knowledge. So th that's what you do. Uh, use the rest of the things. I think uh, you are very good. All the best to you. Absolutely. You have any questions? Please do that. Otherwise, you are very good. You are not good. Sir, uh, do I elongate my answers? I have written down here once in a while. I felt yes. it was rather longish. I've written it uh, okay. there. Otherwise, you're fine. Absolutely fine. Just to add on, please. Uh -huh. Uh, when sir asked about the Hindenburg reports and all of this current affairs, you should have answered his questions very well. These are very common reports and all of Are you able to recall that now? No, actually, oh, no. Oh, okay. I, didn't, I, I was out of the subject for a long time now, okay, so okay. I think… Uh, well, this is part of your desk. Yes, yes. because your graduation yes, and yes. MA is in this part only. Yes, yes. So you should have handled that well. Yes, I will brush it up now. Yeah, good. Yeah, is very important. Questions will be more than Yes, sir. Numbers will be less than that. They will have the same idea. Correct. Seventy percent questions will be from the desk. Thirty percent from front of face. I will brush it up, sir. All the best. Thank All you the very good. Thank you. All the best. Thank you, sir. Bye bye.